Welcome to my talk about combining confinement and rotation to improve heat transport in radio banal convection. I'm happy that you're watching, or at least that you started. Let me show you a brief teaser first. Uh, you may eventually pause to get an overview or switch to my do uh, slides document where I can use these hyperlinks to interactively jump to your section of interest. Well, to get all the details, I hope that you will stay with me for the next couple of minutes. To begin with, uh, let me shortly introduce our setup to those who might not be too familiar with it. We perform direct numerical simulations of rotating Rayleigh Bernard, um, meaning we solve mass, momentum and energy uh, conservation in a rotating cylindrical framework heated from below and cooled from above. This setup is controlled by four dimensionless parameters, namely the Rayleigh number for thermal driving, um, the Prante number describing the fluid properties, gamma being the um, aspect ratio of the cylinder, and the Rossby number setting the rotation rate of our system. So if only the uh, Rossby number is uh, varied, it's known to get heat transport enhancement for an intermediate range of uh, Rossby numbers. Um, and recently, Chong and I have shown that also for confinement, such an intermediate uh, regime exists where the heat transport is enhanced. Our goal now is to investigate how these two, confinement and rotation, together may interfere uh, and affect the heat transport. Or uh, mainly, how much can we enhance the heat transport and how does this enhancement work at various Rayleigh numbers. But this Rayleigh number dependence, I would just give a short outlook in the end of the talk. Um, let us start with the heat transport uh, in a 2D parameter space of rotation and confinement for fixed Brandt and Rayleigh number. And despite of the similarity we have just uh, seen, um, we do not observe um, a connected region of enhancement with a clear maximum. Actually, we uh, observe three separated maximums. So we have maximum A here, uh, in absence of rotation, directly sitting on the confinement axis. Therefore, we will call it from now on confinement maximum. Then we have maximum B, which is somehow connected to the uh, enhancement by rotation for large domains. Um, due to its flow structure, you will, you will see in a second, we will call it double vortex maximum. And we have um, then a maximum C sitting somehow at the tip of the whole enhancement region of maximum B. Um, and due to its flow structure, we will call it single vortex maximum. Let us now have a look on the flow characteristics and uh, I will start with the confinement maximum. So from the temperature snapshot, we immediately see that we have a domain spanning uh, flow structure of two plumes, one hot plume rising, one cold plume sinking. And from the temporal evolution of the heat transport and the RMS velocity components, we can clearly see a fluctuating behavior of this. And additionally, uh, from the RMS velocity components, we can uh, see some flow characteristics. So the vertical motion is predominant here indicated by the solid line um, over both horizontal components. See here the dash and dotted line are, um, have a very small contribution in this case. This is different for the double vortex maximum. First we see in the temperature snapshot not two plumes but the name giving two vortices one filled with hot fluid, one filled with cold fluid. And additionally, it appears to be um, very stable in time after this double vortex state is reached. So, and the flow characteristics is uh, very different as well. So rotation is already strong enough um, to be the predominant motion, both Horizontal components and simultaneously here dashed line and radial dotted line are larger than vertical motion um, indicated by the solid line here. Um, and for large domains, multiple of these vertical aligned uh, vortices exist. 
and Eggman pumping is identified to be the mechanism that feeds these vortices with hot or cold fluid from the boundary layers. So in our case, having a look on the heat transport for fixed aspect ratio or largest aspect ratio, uh, considering the variation in rotation here, following that line at the bottom of our parameter space and mapping it on the boundary layer ratio of thermal over kinetic boundary layer, we see as expected our heat transport is largest for boundary layer ratio of uh, approximately one. This is according um, to theory and other observations um, as expected. If we now proceed to smaller aspect ratios, we observe a slight shift, but still um, we have the peak more or less at the boundary layer ratio of approximately one. Now we are approaching uh, the aspect ratio which, at which uh, our double vortex maximum is obtained. And there we see still we get the maximum heat transport enhancement at a boundary layer ratio of approximately one. But now we observe a very rapid or sharp onset of these heat transport enhancement at boundary layer ratio of approximately one. And proceeding even further to smaller aspect ratios, uh, we do not see any heat transport enhancement anymore at boundary layer ratio of approximately one. We just observe, observe it later for larger boundary layer ratios. And this is also including the single vortex maximum, uh, as you see, indicated here by the small inset picture. So the remaining question now is, what causes this late heat transport enhancement uh, for the small aspect ratios? Um, may the Ekman pumping be not be valid there anymore? Or what causes the difference to the classical view we have for large aspect ratios? So to answer this question, let us uh, have a look on the flow characteristics of the single vortex maximum as well. Not surprisingly, we see in the temperature snapshot a domain spanning structure of a single vortex. Um, and um, we see that in this case, cold fluid uh, sinks in the center of the vortex, uh, whereas at the side walls, um, hot fluid is rising. Could be vice versa with hot uh, fluid rising in the center and a curtain of cold fluid sinking in the side walls. But the interesting thing is that this vertically asymmetric flow structure appears to be pretty stable in time as well. And it shows its own flow characteristics with predominant azimuth motion, still for a rotating regime, that's fine. But radial, the radial component is nearly suppressed. It's not totally zero, but it's nearly suppressed. So compared to both other maximums, we have a, um, a very large ratio between the azimuthal component and the radial component. Um, the solid line for the vertical component is somewhere in between. So as I told you from this characteristic flow motion, um, we have this strong or this large ratio of uh, azimuthal over radial motion and which should be typically for the single vortex flow and indeed what we see here in the parameter space of rotation and confinement again, um, that only at the single vortex maximum, here you see confinement, double vortex and single vortex maximum again, only at the single vortex maximum and very limited around it, um, we see this large ratio of uh, azimuthal over radial motion. So this clearly is an identifier for this single vortex flow regime. Uh, in the same way, we can do this for the other flow regimes, for the confinement maximum, we define, define it um, that the vertical motion is larger than the horizontal, total horizontal motion. Um, and we see that our parameter space is clearly separated into two parts. One part here, the gray part, um, the thermal regime dominated by vertical motion, where adding rotation is always decreasing the heat transport and then we have the rotating regimes um, where horizontal motion is dominant. And um, in this uh, 
la regime, we uh, see the heat transport, we see any heat transport enhancement due to rotation is happening in this regime. And we have the two sub regimes of stable domain spanning flow formation, which is a double vortex flow, the green area, and the single vortex flow, the red area. With this knowledge, we will now have a second look on our Eggman pumping problem. And now you remember this figure, we will just recolor the data points by the regime um, they are located in. And this is what we get. This is nearly explaining everything. We can now explain the sharp and late onsets. As you observe for the small aspect ratios, um, the sharp onsets is just happening when we enter um, the rotating regimes from the thermal regime. So in other words, easy, easily spoken, no heat transport enhancement for boundary layer ratio of approximately one if no Ekman pumping is present because we are still in the thermal vertically dominated regime. On the other hand, for larger aspect ratios, we enter the rotation dominated uh, regimes earlier. So we have this increase towards the boundary layer ratio of one and then a decrease again. What we can also observe is that uh, the formation of a stable uh, flow structure or domain spanning flow structure um, is always increasing the heat transport compared to the blue points here, which are just um, feeded by Ekman pumping. And then you can see the largest heat transport here in the center figure um, is of course uh, observed when stable domain spanning flow coincidence with Ekman pumping being present and a beneficial boundary layer thickness. Um, overall, that means that the heat transport depends on the interference of efficiency of heat transport within the bulk and the injection into um, and from the boundary layers. So let me conclude. We observe three distinct heat transport maxima in the parameter space of rotation and confinement with unique domain spanning flow structures. The maxima result from an interference of two different types of enhancing effects. We have the bulk related confinement effects like stable flow, uh, domain spanning flow, which increase the efficiency of the heat transported through the bulk and the boundary layer boundary layer related mechanisms like Eggman pumping and the beneficial boundary layer thickness ratio, which increase the efficiency of heat transferred from boundary, la boundary layer to bulk and vice versa. So as an outlook, this interference appears to be strongly Rayleigh number dependent. What we saw here is somehow like a low Rayleigh number regime where we uh, achieve the largest heat transport uh, enhancement for combining confinement and rotation at the double vortex maximum. But I can tell you for large Rayleigh numbers, this interference is weaker. So the largest heat transport enhancement uh, is observed at pure confinement. But anyhow, this is a different topic uh, for a second talk, another talk, another time. Um, thank you for your interest so far. And uh, I'm happy to answer your questions in uh, one or the other virtual way. Bye.